I'm going to show you a really great little conflict of interest checking program designed specifically for law firms. Now this is a standalone product designed for firms that don't want or need an integrated solution. If you do want an integrated system, give us a call because we offer other solutions as well that include everything from billing and accounting and calendar and conflicts. But if all you need is a standalone conflict checker, this might be exactly what you're looking for. Let's start by downloading it from our website and installing it on my computer. Um, and then once we've done that, within a couple of minutes, we're going to have the system up and running uh, and checking conflicts. So we go to LegalSoftwareSystems.com, and the quickest way to get there is the Downloads link. And then pick the Standalone Conflict of Interest System, and then click on this Download link right here. Uh, if, now this is a Windows 7 machine, you might get all kinds of warnings about security. We're just going to go ahead and say run this. It's going to download and uh, run the installer, another security warning. We'll say run again. And then the installer comes up and we'll just follow the prompts. Click next. Uh, read the license agreement of course. Accept the terms. Click next. Just allow it to put it where it wants and click next and the system is now installed on the computer. Uh, I'm going to close this website and it does ask if we want to launch it now. I'm going to quit here so I can show you how to launch the program uh, normally. Now when we installed this it put a new shortcut on our desktop that says LSS conflict of interest so I'll just double click on that and up comes the program. This is the main menu. And I'm going to go through each of the things you need to get up and running. Um, first of all on the left hand side under administration there's a security link uh, you don't have to set up security but if you want to restrict users with passwords and access levels and that sort of thing you can do that I'm, I'm not going to because we don't actually need it to use the system so we'll just leave that blank uh, timekeepers we do need to set up timekeepers these are the attorneys in your firm typically uh, and I'll show you why uh, a little bit later but uh, we'll start by entering a timekeeper code AAA. We'll do Adams Arnold A and BBB Baker Be Betty B. And you can set up as many timekeepers as you want. We're done with that. And next we'll set up some conflict types using this link and a conflict type is a code. I'm going to put in conflict type 1 and we'll call this conflict type uh, officer like an officer of a company. Um, we can add a type 2 that would be relative a type 3 for plaintiff. You can set up as many different conflict types as you want and you'll see how these get used in just a little bit. Now if your firm has multiple offices you can create office codes. We don't need to do that so I'm not going to. There's a system defaults uh, page where we can uh, set different defaults. I'm gonna just leave, well, I'm gonna change this one here from literal name to full text search. You'll see that um, in a little bit as well. And then product registration. When you buy the product this is where you key in the registration uh, number. So now the system's ready to start uh, accepting client names and matter descriptions and, and other party names. I'm going to show you the long way to do this first, and then I'll show you a shortcut in a little bit. Uh, we're going to concentrate on these three buttons right here under maintenance, clients, matters, and other parties. I'm going to start by adding a few clients to the system, or, or just maybe one. Uh, we'll put in client number 1001, and I can hit enter on the keyboard or just add client here, and we can type in uh, the client name. If we had multiple offices we could pick the office that this client belongs to. Uh, contact attorney, this is where the timekeeper codes that we entered earlier uh, are used because every client can be assigned to a specific contact attorney so you can get lists and that sort of thing. Open date for the client. If this was a closed client you could put the closed date here and then there's a comments uh, box. We'll say this a really great company to work with and click Save. We've just set up our first client and you can continue adding all of your clients uh, right here from this screen. Now once you have your clients set up you need to uh, add the matters because every 
client could have multiple matters, or some people call these files. So here's a list of my clients. I'll pick this client, and I'm going to add matter number 001, and we'll call this employment matter. This is just a description of the case. And the responsible attorney defaults to what we had entered for the uh, contact attorney at the client level, but we could change this if we wanted to, to Betty. And then any comments. And th these comments are fully searchable as well. Um, I'll put that in the comment box. These comments are fully searchable as well. And we could add another matter for this client, matter two. And we'll call this uh, land sale agreement. Just like that. And if we had other clients, we could add matters for those clients as well. So now that we have clients in the system and matters in the system, what's left are all the other names associated with our clients and matters. And we call these other parties. And for that, I'll go and click on the other parties button and then add name down here. I'm going to type in uh, Doe John Henry. So John Henry Doe. I, I always enter names, last name, comma, first name, just like you would find them in a phone book. Uh, consistency is important, but not necessary. And so I've added the name to the system, and I'm going to add it as a conflict to or associated with an existing client or matter. So I'll click on Add Conflict. And for the conflict type, I'm going to say officer. And it's related to client 1001. If you don't know the client number, you can click the lookup button here to pick it from a list. And so John Henry Doe is an officer at this company. I'm not going to list a matter number here because that name is associated with the, the whole client. And we need to pick a timekeeper to check with if this name ever comes up in a search. And we'll say it was entered on this day. And we might say uh, something about this conflict in the description box and click Save. And we've just added our first conflict name. Now I want to add one more conflict name, this time associated with one of the matters. So I'm going to back up uh, screen here and click Add Name. And in this case, I'll put in Williams. Um, Chris A. So there's my new name. I'm going to add it as a conflict. And this time I'm going to say, uh, let's do plaintiff, this client, and uh, on the, we'll do this with the employment matter. So Chris Williams is a plaintiff in this particular case. Put in the timekeeper code the date that this became a potential conflict and then again you could add more description down here. I'm going to click Save and we're going to exit out of this. We've added a client, a couple of matters, and now we've added a couple of other parties associated with these clients and matters. So now with information in the system we get to do the important stuff and that's the conflict searches. For that just click this search uh, button right here at the top of the screen and the search screen comes up. Here I'm going to just type one of the words that we've put in. Uh, let's do Henry. And I'll click search. And it lists all names in the system that it finds containing the word Henry. I'm going to back up just a screen, one screen here. Uh, but earlier in the firm defaults, I said set the firm default to full text phrase. That's what allows me to search for Henry located anywhere within the name. If I had searched based on literal name, I would have had to type in the name exactly as it, as it appears. So I'd have to type in Doe to find John Henry Doe. If I type in Henry with a literal name search, it's not going to find it. So as a default, I like to use the full text phrase search. And it doesn't matter which, we can enter multiple words, and it doesn't matter which order they're in. So we can do Henry Doe, click search, and it finds it, even though Henry and Doe are in different part, places within that name. Let's try some other name searches. Um, we'll type the word search, and click here. 
and it found the word search in this employment matter. I'll click on the employment matter and down here we see that in the comments box we had a word beginning with the letters uh, that spell out search. So really that's how easy it is to, to locate uh, information in this system. We'll type in uh, legal software. It finds this client. You can always click on the item and it brings up information about it. Uh, we can type one of the other names. I think we did uh, Chris Williams. Found that. Click on it. Here it shows that Chris Williams is a plaintiff. Now, this name we entered earlier, Chris Williams, we linked it to this case as a plaintiff, but that same name could be linked to literally dozens of clients and matters in the system. And it, if it was, you would see all of those listed down here. There's the information. If we back up to this search screen, um, we can also, instead of searching by name, we can go down here and search by case. I'll put in a client number. When I hit enter, it brings up all of the names, uh, conflict names, the other parties associated with this particular client. And also, when you do these searches, anytime you're looking at the search results, there's a print button down here. So you can actually print out a piece of paper showing how you searched. Uh, for the name and all the results associated with it. That's it. That's searching uh, for conflicts. Now earlier I told you I was showing you the long way to add clients, add matters, and other parties to the system. And we did it in three separate steps. We added the client first, then we added the matters here, and then we added the other parties down here. But when setting up a new client matter and listing a bunch of names, you can actually do everything right through this matters button. If we click on matters, I can type in a new client number and a new matter number. When I hit enter, it brings up the client screen. Um, we'll put in just sample client name. and click save. Then it immediately brings up the matter screen. And down here at the bottom we can add conflicts right from this screen. And it prefills everything except the conflict type. We need to know, okay, this is, let's say there's a relative. And then if we had more conflicts to add to this new matter, we just keep hitting add conflicts, typing the names and continuing. When we're all done, just hit save the matter set up. Now you can download this program on your computer and y w use it free of charge and, and store up to I think 100 names in the system. Uh, that'll give you a chance to try things out, make sure you understand how it works and that you like the product. And if you do, uh, then you, you can purchase it and we'll give you a registration code that unlocks it so you can maintain an unlimited number of names in the software. Uh, when you're ready to do that, just click the green order here button at the bottom of the screen and an order form comes up. All your options are listed here. Uh, fill it out, print, uh, hit print. It'll print out the order form with all the instructions that you need to get started. Uh, it, it's only $299 for a single user system. You can even install that on a network. It just limits it to one person at a time accessing it or if you want a multi-user system uh, that allows unlimited number of users to access it. It's $499. Uh, we'll provide free um, email uh, support, email-based support, uh, or if you want to, for a network multi-user network version, $149 a year gets you unlimited operational support on our toll-free number, uh, plus any product upgrades that come out that year. So that's about it. Um, I hope you have a chance to try this out on your own. If you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, all of our contact information is right there on our website where you download the system. Uh, thanks for watching.